Welcome to this video where we look at the Z transform of these two functions. Z transform of these two functions. Given a discrete function f of k, given a discrete function f of k, the Z transform of the discrete function is obtained as f of Z is equals to the sum from k to infinity, the summation k from zero to infinity of the function f of k multiplied by z for minus k. For any given discrete function f of k, its Z transform is obtained by the summation from K is equals to zero to infinity of F of K multiplied by Z power minus K. I will illustrate this with certain examples. Let's take one example. Example for a unit step function defined by F of K is a function that has values of zero for k less than zero, the values of one for all values greater than or equal to zero. The function f of z or its z transform f of z will be obtained by the summation from k zero to infinity of f of k, which is one, multiplied by z power minus k, which will be equal to when k is zero, we get one. When k is one, we get z power minus one plus z power minus two plus z power minus three plus all the way to infinity. Remember this is a summation from zero to infinity. A closer look at this expression, we we'll notice that this is a geometric progression whose first term a is equals to one and the common ratio r is z power minus one. We know that the sum to infinity of a geometric progression is obtained by a over one minus r. And therefore, in this case, our sum to infinity will be equal to one over one minus z power minus one. And therefore, the z transform of a unit step function will be given by one over one minus z power minus one. Of course, the same can be written as z over z minus one. Number two, we can take a unit ramp input or a unit ramp function. The unit ramp is defined by the unit ramp is defined by f of k is a function defined by zero for all values of k less than zero and defined by kt for values of k greater than or equal to zero, from which our f of z will be equal to the sum or the summation of terms k is equal to zero to infinity of kt multiplied by z power minus k, from which we can obtain, when k is zero, we'll get zero. When k is one, the function becomes t z power minus one, plus k is two, get two t z power minus two, plus three t z power minus three, plus, Four t z power minus four. And this is our f of z. You can call this equation one for reference purposes. If we take equation one and multiply, if we multiply equation one by z power minus one, then the equation becomes on the left hand side we get z power minus one f of z will be equal to t z power minus two 
plus 2t z for minus 3 plus 3t z for minus 4 plus 4t z for minus 5. You can call this equation 2. If we subtract equation 2 from equation 1, equation 1 subtract equation 2, then we'll end up with, in the left hand side, we'll have f of z minus z inverse, f of z will be equal to, we have t z power minus 1 plus, then this term, this term, we'll get t z power minus 2 plus this term, minus this term, we'll get t z power minus 3, and so on. And you notice that we, we can factor out f of z and write f of z into 1 minus z power minus 1 will be equal to t into z power minus 1 plus z power minus 2 plus z power minus 3. Then we can take the function z power minus 1 plus z power minus 2 plus z power minus 3, the summation, all the way to infinity. And observe that this is a geometric progression whose first term is z power minus 1. The common ratio is also z power minus 1. And therefore, the sum to infinity of that expression is z power minus 1 over 1 minus z power minus 1. And therefore, we can write f of z into 1 minus z power minus 1 will be equal to t z power minus 1 over 1 minus z power negative 1. From which we can then write our f of z to be equal to t z power minus 1 divided by 1 minus z power negative 1 squared. If we divide both sides by this term, and that becomes the z transform of a unit stem step district function. Of course, this you can also write as t z over z minus 1 squared. Let's take an exponential function. For an exponential function, f of k defined by exponential negative a k t, the z transform of that function can be obtained as the sum from k to 0 to infinity of f of k, which is exponential negative a k t multiplied by z power minus k, which you can obtain as when k is 0, when k is 0, we will get 1, when k is 1, we get exponential minus a t z power minus 1, when k is 2, we get exponential minus 2at z power minus 2 plus exponential minus 3at z power minus 3. Then we observe this to be a geometric progression again, whose first term a is 1, and the common ratio is exponential minus at z power minus 1. From which then our sum to infinity will be defined by a, which is 1, over 1 minus r, exponential negative a t z power negative 1. And therefore, the z transform of the sine function or the exponential function will be obtained as 1 over 1 minus exponential negative a t z power minus 1, which can also be written as z 
over z na na exponential over p a t and that is the z transform of an exponential function can take a sine function for a sine function defined by f of k is the sine of k omega t the sine function defined by f of k is sine k omega t then from Euler's identity we know that sine x is defined by exponential j x minus exponential negative j x over 2 j also the cosine x is defined by exponential j x minus exponential negative j x divided by 2. that means our f of k can be written as exponential j k omega t minus exponential negative j k omega t over 2j. Following the z transform of an exponential function, for an exponential function, where we have noted that if you have an exponential function, exponential negative a k t, its z transform becomes 1 over 1 minus exponential negative a t z for minus 1. It follows then that the z transform of exponential j k omega t will be equal to 1 over 1 minus exponential negative j omega t z for minus 1. So because this is negative, this sign is negative, and this is positive, then this sign will be positive. And therefore, it's good to note that this function will be positive. And this is exponential j omega t. Then the z transform of negative j k omega t can be derived or equal to 1 over 1 minus exponential negative j omega t z for minus 1. And therefore, our f of z from this function can be defined as 1 over 2j into the two parts, which is 1 over 1 minus exponential j omega t z for minus 1 minus 1 over 1 minus exponential j omega t z for minus 1 which you can write as 1 over 2j into put them in a common LCM which is 1 minus j omega t z for minus 1 into 1 minus exponential j omega t z for minus 1 then this becomes 1 minus exponential j omega t z for minus 1 minus, minus then we have 1 and then plus exponential j omega t z for minus 1. Which you can proceed to write as for f of z is 1 over 2j into so this term 1 and 1 will cancel out then i'll have this term this i can factor out z for minus 1 to obtain z for minus 1 into exponential j omega t minus exponential omega t j omega t then divided by we expand the denominator so this is one this term by one in this term 
one by one again. You can factor out z for minus one. And then we will multiply these two terms, the exponential parts will collapse, and we have that as z for minus two, which you can write now as one minus exponential j omega t minus exponential negative j omega t into z power minus one plus z power minus two. Okay. Then we look at this term, look at this term divided by two j, then we know that the sine of omega t will be exponential j omega t minus exponential omega t j omega t over two j this part. And also the cos of omega t is exponential so this term will be positive exponential j omega t plus exponential omega t j omega t over two means two cos omega t is exponential j omega t plus exponential minus j omega t. And therefore, our f of z can be written as z inverse, the sine of omega t on this part of 2j divided by one minus, then this part is two, Z inverse the cosine of omega t plus z for minus two. And this becomes the z transform of the sine function sine k omega t. And that is the z transform with illustration. And that brings us to the end of our video. In the next video, we'll be looking at the inverse Z transform and the properties of the Z transform. Thank you for watching this video.